Hi, this is Eric at Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm, and this is Florida Natural Farming. Today I'm going to talk about nitrogen fixing plants, the living orchard floor, and the symbiotic relationship between uh, trees and the living orchard floor and uh, biologicals for fruit tree production for fruit. And I'm standing in front of a mango tree, a super julie tree, and directly behind it is a nitrogen fixing tree called uh, Inga cinnamoniae. It's the Bolivian, or no, the Brazilian, sorry, Brazilian uh, ice cream bean. And to be honest with you, I've never noticed a uh, an increase in the speed of growth or uh, fruit production from the use of just a, uh, a a tree or like the pigeon pea. In combination with the living orchard floor and cow manure, uh, I've seen huge results. It's a symbiotic relationship. You can't just rely on one input. But if you had to rely on one input, I would choose the cow manure, uh, the zebu manure, the holistically grown zebu manure. And I have this big jackfruit tree. It's a grafted jackfruit, orange crushed jackfruit. And it had never flowered before. And I wanted to see what would happen if I started tying my little miniature zebu bowl up next to it. Uh, Romy. He's gonna be here in January. He's just a good little boy. He's getting his horns, tiny little thing. And he's been pooping and peeing under it while I make videos like a good boy. And um, I noticed the other day when I was walking by here that I could smell jackfruit blooms. I love the smell of jackfruit blooms. And so I looked all over and sure enough, in November, mid-November, we have jackfruit trees uh, flowering and fruiting, which it just seems like an odd time of year for this to be going on, but it's due to the, to the zebu manure. We've been experimenting uh, this dry farming technique for 13 years continuously at our beach house. And over there, I don't apply any inputs. One time I applied uh, five pounds of compost on two and a half acres and I got fruit production out of my mango trees. But every year before that and every year since that, I've, we've never had any fruit. So applying inputs on Florida sand is really important. And... <clears throat> The miniature zebu manure has shown to increase the growth of trees. And so I have lots of pigeon peas growing here. This is a nitrogen fixing or not a nitrogen storing plant. Uh, it's an, you know, a nitrogen hoarder, uh, the uh, Caesar weed, uh, it's a malva. And here's more pigeon pea. And I've done, uh, done, uh, I looked at my orchard floor to, to, to see what was growing in it when I grew it out, the living orchard floor. And I found more than 20 different types of nitrogen fixing plants that just showed up on their own. So it's a symbiotic relationship and the living orchard floor, I just read a study today, uh, it, has been shown to uh, have bi more biological diversity and a better pH uh, for your fruit trees than uh, than other uh, mulching systems. So we are like a combined. Uh, we I combine like all the regenerative forms of agriculture, indigenous farming, permaculture, syntropic agroforestry, biodynamic farming, uh, natural farming, Korean natural farming, uh, Indian zero budget natural farming, and I take aspects of them and uh, have come up with this type of system and in combination with the five soil health principles. And the two soil health principles that I feel you only need to know 
are do not disturb. So that means uh, you just stay off of it and uh, and uh, combine use combine animals into your system. So we use the miniature zebu uh, cattle. So here's a Inga spectabilis tree. And I've experimented with Inga trees and planting them in the same hole with other trees just to see what type of growth I would get. And I can't tell any difference um, between trees that are planted like out there and trees that are planted directly with the Inga spectabilis here. This is a little jackfruit seedling. And I have other jackfruits that I planted at the same time. And to be honest with you, uh, a lot of them are a lot bigger. So they're not with the uh, Inga, Inga, Inga tree, the uh, nitrogen fixing uh, a legume tree. <clears throat> we haven't gotten fruit off our Inga trees. They're seed grown trees and everything's a little slower here. Uh, I saw that they changed the uh, the uh, the zones to, so we're totally in zone 10A, which I kind of felt we were. So. That's interesting, but we're further north and uh, even though 10A here is the same as 10A in Felsmere, I know, which is inland and uh, Indian River County, I know that our 10A is different than their 10A. And uh, so it's, it's a little bit warmer. So the further north you get, the, the slower your stuff, your tropicals are gonna be generally, I, I think, from the cold, from the cool temperatures. So I planted a bunch of ultra tropicals this year. The Artocarpus uh, breadfruit, breadnut tree is one of them. I direct sowed seeds and they're all popping up everywhere. This is an oil nut tree from Hindustan. And look at how healthy that looks. It's so ultra tropical. Never seemed to mind. That was a gift from my friend Frank and Annette. <clears throat> so over here I have a bunch of stuff and, and it all seems to do good. Everything seems to do good. When it does really well is when I apply a, a load of uh, my daily manure next to the tree. Uh, that speeds up growth quickly and you know, we don't water anything here. It's it's a uh, just a, a, a system that doesn't re doesn't require uh, constant uh, maintenance though. I do apply My daily manure every day and I've been doing it for eight years straight and there is a difference in productivity uh, between me doing that and uh, friends that my friend Frank who has zebu cows, but he doesn't apply the manure daily He keeps his cows at a different site. So he collects it, but he does he's not consistent with it He doesn't I tell him you need to apply it daily little bits just collect a bucket a day That's like so important and the zebu manure does turn into soil aggregation and you can grow uh, seeds and you can grow uh, fruit tree cuttings directly in it the dried up cow patties uh, and then you just rehydrate them and, and break it up and here's my little uh, uh, terichuela tree that I just got a fruit off of and there's more fruit on there right here and this tree produces so much fruit and it just continuously continuously fruits um, and I love this little tree uh, it's it's kind of tastes like the lemon drop mangosteens but they're bigger and they're much more expensive, I know that, but it's growing right next to this nitrogen fixing tree. I haven't noticed it being any faster than any of the, the any of the other uh, uh, Garcinia trees we have here. And we have probably, uh, easily probably 750 Garcinia trees. But, when you have this, all this stuff growing together in mass unison, uh, it does uh, all work together. And the biology in the soil, it's not so much the nitrogen fixing tree as it is the, the enzymes, the, the biological uh, microorganisms uh, that is converting the nitrogen to ammonia. So the ammonia, the uh, ammonia, the nitrogen converting 
uh, enzymes into ammonia. So if you don't have the biology, you can have all the nitrogen fixing plants in the world, but you're not really going to get the um, the benefits of the nitrogen fixing tree. So the biology they've shown, such as hero trees, I'm trying to think, oh, there's another bread nut tree. The biology in cow dung, they have shown that it fixes nitrogen uh, months after uh, it's mixed in the soil. So the, 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 uh, the, the cow dung contains the biology that you need for your nitrogen fixing tree to uh, fix nitrogen better. Because <clears throat> cow dung does it on its own. So the enzymes uh, get, get uh, distributed, the enzymes in the cow manure that fix nitrogen into ammonia for plant uptake, uh, they are distributed by the fungi that live in a living root system like this. So all these diverse plants, all the, all the, the uh, microbiology lives in the root zone, especially in grass. And grass and fungi, they've shown to be like the major uh, contributors to uh, soil mineralization. And if you're not getting soil mineralization, which is soil aggregation, uh, then you're not, uh, you don't really have the biology, the right biology. You need the, the biology that, that um, can mineralize the carbon into soil aggregates. <clears throat> It's all very complicated, but they've kind of put it all together and I've, I've got a general understanding of it. There's so much more that I could learn and I just, I've been on like a really dull week because I've had, I had highs. They're like finally going away for like more than 10 days and I couldn't think and I couldn't um, read anything. I just couldn't sit still. I just couldn't sleep. It was just a mess. And um, I'm finally feeling better. And I found out I was allergic to uh, wheat, but I'm thinking maybe it is maybe a gut bacteria, a blasto something, blastomycystis or something like that. Um, but I, I need to go to the doctor and have it checked out, uh, see what that is. They'll probably look at me like I'm crazy. But anyway, so this is a huge nitrogen fixing tree. This is uh, interlobium. It's the elephant ear tree. It's also the state tree of uh, uh, Costa Rica, the guanacaste tree. And it's a huge, huge, huge nitrogen. And when I first moved here, I would plant plants around it thinking that they would all survive because being under this mother plant. But that was before I had like built up the soil with biologicals and stuff grew on the edge of it. But if I planted stuff in here, it would all kind of die. Not kind of die, it did. And that's why I didn't have any trees planted in here until I started putting bananas in here and got the biologicals right. So I did plant this cacao seedling on the edge of it. And as you can see, it's like overperforming. It's covered in fruit. It's covered in flowers still. And this is all being done without any supplemental water. So just the fact that I don't have to water and worry about water during times of drought is a major relief and uh, on my psychological state and don't, I don't have to stress out. You know how it is to stress over watering plants? First of all, the water that you're using probably isn't the right pH, which is the whole problem with mulch, with just using mulch and not a living mulch in combination with mulch. Because the living orchard floor keeps the pH of the soil at a constant, and it's the constant uh, pH, the correct pH for the tree that's growing there. And it could be, it's due to the microbiology in the soil. So when you have a, have a mulch on there and you don't have the microbiology below the mulch. You have saprophytic fungi, which is good, but you want all the other stuff, the uh, nitrogen-fixing enzymes and bacteria uh, that come 
and live in the living root and get distributed to your nitrogen fixing tree with the help of the fungi. The saprophytic fungi, the endophytic fungi, the mycorrhizal fungi. So I have lots of epiphytes here. It reminded me of TFF, that word. I just can't go on TFF. I, I just want to like focus on um, what I do here. And, and sometimes I have to hide people's comments. I don't block anybody from my channel. You can't block people from viewing your channel. I don't want to block people from my channel. But in the past, I've had people that want to change the narrative of my videos. And I give them a chance to stop and but if they continuously do it and after seeing what was written on tff i realized exactly who that person was and yes i'm going to hide your comments but please by all means if you feel like i you were not that i was negatively affected by your comments feel free to call me and i will uh reinstate you uh if if you feel that you have to um, be able to give comments. I, I don't want to block anybody, but I get negatively affected on my thinking process when people try to steer the direction of my um, my uh, my my conversation away from what I'm talking about. So uh, that's the only reason why I do it. It's not that I hate anybody and I don't do it to hurt anybody. I'd never do that to hurt anybody. It's just people interpret stuff they read online differently. Everybody interprets it differently. Anyway, look at these aeroids. This Queen Waraquianum, uh, uh Queen Anthurium and this giant uh, Philodendron Maximum and these uh, anthurium regales and it's been really windy here and then this is the uh, philodendron melanochrysum this is why i had to hide somebody's comments because i did a huge uh, video on uh, uh all my aeroids when i kept them inside it was like 52 aeroids and it was a whole thing on 52 aeroids and i made a mistake on one of them but one I didn't make a mistake on was Philodendron melanochrysum, which is this plant here that grew up in the leaves, obviously came out as melanochrysum. But they tried to tell me that it was Philodendron brandiatum, or not brandiatum, but the other one with the small leaves. And I'm like, uh, no, it's not. But they didn't pick out the one that I did make a mistake on. And I do make mistakes. I make lots of mistakes, but being a bone collector in the comments section isn't a good way to endear me to your uh, comments. <clears throat> anyway, so this big nitrogen fixing tree, all these things are doing great here. And this is Philodendron luxuriens, which is a, uh, a philodendron that's very hard to grow, but it's growing in the ground just fine. I'm trying to see if it has any new growth. It got trash from the, it's been very windy here. These are my little cacao seedlings I need to plant. And then this is uh, uh, Philodendron glorios, glorious, gloriosum. And look at how beautiful that is. And it's in the ground. And I have some other ones in the ground. I have this King Anthurium right here. It's doing very good. I have this Anthurium longus malobum right here that is doing good, but wanting to get trashed by everything. I have these uh, philodendron or monstera obliqua peru. Or no, that's a skeleto. Eh. These are in the ground. This is the uh, uh, SP Columbia. This is a uh, linamii, philodendron linamii. I love them. I'm obsessed with them. Here's more of my. Uh, uh, this is why I don't plant big seeds in the ground. This is the breadfruit or bread nut tree that I put in my compost. Uh, but this is the uh, the uh, Garcinia lindero, and it's huge. And see, there's a little uh, nitrogen fixing leaves from the guanacaste tree that fall in there. But I do know that our system is like has had lots of uh, daily manure put on at the rate of 29 pounds of nitrogen per acre per year plus or minus 10 pounds you know it's not an exact science you kind of guesstimate uh every load how much weight is in the manure and then figure out the nitrogen and uh it's off 
it's not, you know, I don't weigh it every time I come out here. So I saw that I had one of those uh, trees growing over here. Here's one. Uh, it looks good. Stuff does very well under this giant nitrogen fixing tree now. But it's because I have all the plant diversity in here and I have all the, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the inputs from the, from the zebu manure. So here's a little, uh, a little uh, pulisan tree, uh, uh, ultra tropical that never suffered from the drought without ever being watered. Cause I take my plants and I remove the soil and I uh, throw it away because it's polluted with fungicides, herbicides, insecticides, and uh, microplastics from how it's being raised in plastic pots. And so I don't want to pollute my soil. It's not just because of the microplastics. It's because it's polluted soil. And I try to keep a closed loop system. So I throw it away. Here's my little durian tree. And this tree never was watered. And it's been here for a couple months now, uh, maybe a month, between a month or two months. And look at how healthy it is. And that's all new growth on there. There's a little cacao tree, it's the same thing. There's a, a, a skeleto, uh, there's the durian I just planted just recently and it looks really good too. So I'm fairly certain that this is going to be a durian farm. Uh, I just, I just feel it. The, they used to say that it was the soil was an issue with the durian here and you can grow anything in Florida, it turns out. It's just, you have to focus on soil health. Soil health in combination with other regenerative farm practices. We do a little chop and drop. We do a little uh, cropping of our trees. There's the other durian I'm gonna look at. <clears throat> this is the one I did a video of when I planted it. I just don't wanna step on anything because I know I have other stuff in here. Just wanna look at it. But look at how nice it looks. It's got the branches. This is all new growth pretty much right here. It's all new growth since I planted it just a couple weeks ago. And as soon as I put it in the ground, it just pops. It just, without the soil in the root zone, it just pops. And the reason why I don't hang on to that soil is because of all the pollution that they use in nurseries. And you're not really gonna get uh, healthy soil from it. Um, uh, you're gonna get fusarium wilt and uh, fungal pathogens. It's shown that um, uh, cow dung uh, prevents uh, fungal pathogens from developing and uh, it's, uh, it works and it's got, uh, it's got uh, plant growth promoting hormones, juberic acid and other things in it. And so it's like the perfect substrate to grow plants, especially on our sand. Just add water, stay off the soil, and let the living orchard floor take hold. So I didn't want to just do a monocrop. I didn't want to mulch this out and replace it with a monocrop of, uh, let's say, uh, perennial peanut. Because it's the diversity that attracts the diversity in the microbiology that's going to be the one thing they haven't discovered that is going to speed up plant growth astronomically. So here's some of our citrus. Look at how healthy our citrus is. No greening whatsoever. This is a sweet orange tree I, I grew from seed. Um, I'm gonna look at the little finger lime tree because I'd asked my friend Frank if his finger limes were doing good. And because he, he grows so many, he said he has a thousand trees he has to plant. Uh, he's got uh, three farms and 25 acres. So it's, it's not a problem for him, but I was trying to turn him on to this, removing the soil from the plants, and he finally started doing it. He researched it and then started doing it, and we talked for a long time yesterday, and he was just going off at how good everything does and how everything survives now when he removes the soil. So here's another uh, uh, bread nut tree. There's a little cacao seedling. It's a little Criollo cacao I planted. Here's my uh, finger lime tree, but he said his finger limes all uh, died in the pots because he has a tendency to leave his plants in pots 
far too long. But now that he sees that uh, the trees, uh, that when you remove the soil, he throws his soil on, he makes his own compost. So he throws the soil on top and then uh, rinses the roots off, or I'm not sure if he rinses the roots, but he removes the soil and then just slips them in the ground like I do, right into like this. He's got a lot more pepper trees and he does a lot more chop and drop. That's his system, it's, it's the right way for him. This is the right way for me. I'm not saying that this is the perfect way and sure I can be guided by other people's influence, but I think I've been influenced already by those uh, other growing methods. And I just, um, I'm a firm believer in, in the living or orchard floor and I'm a firm believer in, in uh, what nature puts in the living orchard floor. Uh, so that you can get the native uh, biology needed for your uh, fruit tree growth. Uh, I was going to look at the little uh, mango seed, uh, seedling because I saw one right here. They're popping up right here. They're popping up like the little cashews. You can't really see the MB or the Achachiro seedlings, but I have seen some Achachiros that are getting kind of large. Then I've got my little, uh, my little cuttings of the aeroids. Uh, they didn't like the drought. They, some of them die back from the drought, but uh, they all do good. So here's another ice cream bean tree. And I experimented with this with garcinias. I do a lot of experimenting with garcinia seeds. So this is a seed grown um, in bee tree. Three years old. Uh, probably going on four. Soon, soon, in the spring probably. It'll be four. And uh, never been watered, of course. But I started in a pot, and in the pot, I started it with uh, Garcinia dulce seeds. And at first, they seemed like they were growing very fast. But here's one. And uh, since then, they seem to have like just slowed down a bit and aren't growing as fast. I also have a philodendron. Uh, Burley Marks, or no, this is a philodendron Jose Bueno, variegated. So I just can't see a difference between um, trees that aren't planted next to a uh, Inga tree and trees that are uh, planted away from them. They just, they, trees planted away from them do just as well. Because you have to look at it as the whole system. That's the, the key. It's the whole system's approach that they look at in biodynamic farming. So one system, not one input or one uh, savior at a time, which is what a lot of people think the Inga tree is. Like you can crop it and that's gonna be your one uh, farm plan. But there's a little abu tree. So here's a big Inga tree and this Jocko Beach, uh, a star apple is taller than the other star apples, but it's always been the biggest one. So it's not like it's grown three times as fast, but I know that if I dumped uh, daily manure next to all these little trees, they would do uh, twice as fast. And I'll show you an example of that. Um, my one-year-old uh, cashew seedling. Look at my tree aloe. So I like uh, desert plants and cacti and stuff. And that, that tree aloe has bloomed. I used to have 15 different tree aloes in San Diego. Um, so for an example of uh, plants that are growing real close to an Inga tree is this Heliconia, Heliconia. And it just never like did really good. And I planted a uh, Garcinia macrophylla, which is right there. It's grown like a typical Garcinia does, slowly, but it grows. But I also, at the same time, bought another one. And I don't know if you can see it, but look at those leaves, that's it. And what I did do differently is I planted it directly in the center of this Heliconia. And whoa, it's like four, five times the size. It's not like it's getting more sunlight, because it's not. 
it's right here and it's all the way up to here it's huge and it's healthy and uh, this isn't considered a nitrogen fixing plant but I do know that it's uh, a favors fungi and I do know that it's near a nitrogen fixing plant and a lot of other plants it seems like the more plants that you can plant together uh, the better it does, but stuff planted in the heliconia, probably because it's so aqueous, so it's like a banana, basically. It's it's a replacement. The leaves are a, a substitute for banana in cooking, and they also use it as a in a uh, in spas in South America or Central America. They wrap, they slather people with aloe, and then they wrap them with heliconia leaves. And I read somewhere where the heliconia is uh, has they developed a painkiller from its uh, from its bioactive compounds. So this tree does very well without being directly under a uh, inga tree, but near it, and with all these other plants, and in the in with the heliconia, this huge heliconia. And it's right next to this uh, star star fruit. This is a uh, juicy pearl star apple, not a star fruit. Um, it looked like it was dropping leaves from the drought that we had, but we've been getting some rain again, so it's doing okay. It's gotten quite large. I'm thinking it's going to fruit this year. I'm just going to look at my uh, my uh, passion. Uh, my, uh, there's the passion fruit. I'm gonna look at my egg fruit to see if it's gotten soft yet. Looks very close, this one does, but the last one I picked still hadn't ripened, so I think I may have did it too early. There's all this tropical fruit uh, harvesting and picking and shipping and selling, it's all like foreign to me. It's all new, I'm slowly getting it. This is gonna be our fourth year where I've uh, sold fruit. Uh, coming up in 2024 and I'm kind of getting the hang of it. My partner supposedly is going to take over the shipping business because I'm just horrible at it. Uh, I make too many mistakes. I would fire myself if I could, but I just, you know, I make a lot of mistakes. It's just a fact of life. Um, here's a Garcinia humilis. There's a, a sweet orange. So I'm going to go look at the... Uh, I notice I have fruit and flowers on this star fruit tree. And then there's a star fruit tree that's very close to the two of them, very close to this Inga tree. And it's like the smallest one. It's also right next to this uh, pigeon pea. And it's next to a pine. Pines have been shown to be nitrogen fix fixers, so or to form relationships with enzymes that fix nitrogen and store nitrogen in nodes. Um, I did uh, roots. I dug up roots of the pine tree because I had nodes, found nodes on them, and then I uh, put them in my uh, Bokashi compost. So here's the the Inga spectabilis tree, and uh, this is the closest tree to it, and it's the smallest one. It's also right next to these pigeon peas. But I put a banana here, and it's starting to look better. Um, here's a, a, another one that's very close to this ice cream bean tree. And uh, we're going to get fruit on our ice cream beans. It's just a matter of time. Everything isn't perfect here all the time. I'm, I like to show everything. Uh, even our failures, are, I don't consider them failures. It's just trees work don't work in time. They work in space time. So here's a, a star fruit. It's got a pigeon pea next to it. There's a, a big, this is a year old uh, cashew. And I found, cause I experimented on this one and another one. I'm gonna go in here and I put daily manure next to it. And I can't even see it now, it's completely gone. And this thing just got huge. Uh, there's a achachiro tree. It got huge, it's the daily manure. Cause the daily manure is fixing nitrogen while it's sitting there. And Feeding it, because you know, you know what mushrooms grow in. You know what type of mushrooms grow in cow dung. Uh, they are uh, distributing that that nitrogen, that ammonia from the enzymes in the cow dung to the to the tree. So here's the other one I did the experiment, and this one's huge. 
uh, it's like, I mean, I can't believe this tree is a year old without ever having to be watered. <clears throat> I share this stuff because of Florida is such an amazing place. So there's a bunch of other stuff in here. I see an achacha right here. I see a little seedling guava over there. I know I have a lot of Luke's Garcinias in there. Florida is such an amazing place. And it's a shame that people just don't understand that it's very easy to destroy it because we're on sand. And the over application of fertilizers uh, removes the carbon from the soil. So if you're using salt-based fertilizers, they're eating up the carbon in the soil, which is the hardest thing to keep in sand. And that's what you need for the plants to grow. So uh, <clears throat> plant roots put the carbon and keep the carbon in the soil. And they also uh, have the biology in the soil that's going to uh, contain the enzymes that are able to fix nitrogen. So I'm going to go over to the... Uh, this is a mess. I hate, I don't hate, but I just like vines and grapevines. Um, and this is like such a fertile spot because this tree got hit by lightning. And look at all the fungi growing in the, I'm going to go up there a little bit. Growing in the, uh, this tree branch. Whoa. So this is like where when you have like all these nutrients and a lot of it is nitrogen, you know, it, it gets captured uh, by like these uh, nitrogen uh, uh, storing plants, the uh, Caesar weed. They, they show up, the plants show up when you have uh, excess nitrogen, the nitrogen fixing plants, the nitrogen storing plants. And... Um, they do quite well. Uh, I, uh, I just read a study where uh, uh, out of China on uh, using jujube sticks, not, not wood chips, but sticks, like from trimming the trees and then dropping them on the ground over a living orchard floor um, is better which makes sense because it's another input. So like throwing wood chips into this would be very good. But it's better at capturing, holding moisture in the system because, you know, plants respire. And if you have the, the uh, sticks that sit above the soil, because I do my chop and drop of my uh, pepper trees that way along the walkway there. And um, there's a little cashew tree. And so then when the sticks are above the soil, they're all carbon and carbon contains, uh, uh, or ca carbon holds eight times its weight in moisture. So any moisture that goes in into the air or not any, but some of it gets captured by that, that uh, the sticks that are above the living orchard floor. <clears throat> it's how nature does it. So here's another big ice cream bean tree. And it has a sapodilla tree that never grew any faster, and it has uh, this uh, dragon fruit uh, plant that's in here you can't really see because this horrible carrot wood tree is there uh, growing on this palm tree, but this thing produces a lot of fruit. Um, and then there's a mango there. They, you know, they don't grow any faster. Um, here's a, a Ross sapote that's uh, flowering well. And um, in here I have a Garcinia ecumenata uh, tree. Uh, that's the sweet version of the Garcinia madruno. I was thinking this was the Garcinia madruno, but the leaves are different. And it's, I did, it's a Garcinia ecumenata also. I know that. Look at how good that looks. Uh, it's been there for a while. It's been there for uh, several years, but it is growing adjacent to the uh, Inga tree. Uh, but is it growing super fast? Not that I noticed. Now, if I dumped a bunch of manure next to it, I bet it would. You know, a daily manure next to it. But I have to be stringent with my daily manure because I only get 365 inputs a year, one for every day. So if I, I, if I don't put it on my trees that um, are fruiting, 
then there's a chance that I'm not going to get fruit from those trees. That's why I do it, because I found that if I apply the manure to the trees before they fruit uh, or after they fruit, that they're going to fruit well quickly again and not, not have any problems. And that daily manure captures moisture and holds moisture because it sits above the soil. It's like a small, low hay input. It's like from the one hay revolution. Um, so it's like a common, this is a combination of everyone's regenerative farm practices, just modified by me. Um, even if I'm just grabbing one tiny little aspect of that, uh, that farm plan, farm system, it's still influenced by uh, regenerative farming. And so that's why I say this is a combination of permaculture, centropic agriculture, Korean natural farming, one, hay rev one straw revolution, um, uh, Japanese natural farming, Indian zero budget natural farming, uh, <clears throat> centropic agroforestry. So I want to come over here and look at a, uh, another uh, Garcinia acuminata tree that is also growing next to a nitrogen fixing tree that has orchids in it. The orchids do great on the nitrogen fixing trees, so do the aeroids. Uh, lizards seem to like it also. So here's a Garcinia acuminata tree. And it's looking good finally. This is very cold sensitive. Um, it's a sweet version of the Garcinia madruna. I'm very excited about that we have some of those popping up. Um, but I have a Garcinia dulcis around here somewhere. It's like, they're hard to find. I, this, I am on a path. I just haven't mowed this. This is how our whole system used to be. Here it is right here. So this is the same age as that tree, that, as those Garcinia dulcis planted next to the, next to the, uh, the Inga spectabilis I showed earlier. And this tree, this Little Garcinia dulcis is twice the size as the ones planted next to the Inga spectabilis that have been planted direct sown with that Inga spectabilis. So uh, uh, it's you have to look at the whole system. You have to look at the orchard floor. You have to look at soil health. It's all in unison. It's not one, one input isn't going to save you. And if you do feel that one input can save you, it's probably, in my view, it's going to be the holistically grown zebu manure. I just feel strongly about, this is a pumlo tree, look at how nice it looks. Uh, we don't have greening on our citrus. I, I, I just don't understand what they did to citrus here in Florida. There's another sweet orange. I have some little citrus over here um, that I saw on the fly that I direct sowed. And I know they're here, I've seen them. I think they're right here. here. Oh my God, it popped up. Right here. Right here. This looks like a sweet orange tree to me. It's kind of close to that nitrogen fixing tree. The nitrogen fixing trees are kind of everywhere now. There's another one right here. I have my uh, Philodendron Spiritus Sancti on it. There's a little Achachi arrow tree, uh, cassava. I think the key takeaway is to plant as much diversity in your system as possible, as close together as possible, and disturb the soil as little as possible, and uh, allow for your uh, what nature uh, uh, wants to put into your system to remain and not kill it. Because uh, that's how you're gonna be able to uh, uh, harvest and collect indigenous microorganisms, even though they do go on invasive species, which is what all these plants that I'm planting are. Uh, they're non-native invasive species, but we have native palm trees and we have native grasses and we have native weeds that nature has put there. There's a little cacao tree, uh, a Criollo cacao doing well. Here's a little pomelo that looks awesome that my friend Frank gave me not that long ago. It looks really nice and healthy. Here's the Spirit of Sancti. It, it really suffered from the heat of summer, and um, but look at the leaves look great. This is that 
uh, philodendron spiritus sancti and it's got some new growth coming on. Uh, I should have watered it a little bit when it was like so drought stricken, but I didn't. It's growing right on this uh, guanacaste tree. Anyway, that's it. This is Eric at Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm and this is Florida Natural Farming. I hope you have an excellent day.